Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, finally getting to another video here. Um, put up uh, one of those short videos there. The, the shorts are less than a minute long of this um, big, big knife there. That was the uh, special edition St. Lawrence Expedition. <laughs> the thing was, is, is, is this one is a little different. It's got, okay, I can't take it anymore. There. Whew. Look at that. Okay, now I know that's just a sheet. I, I've got the dangle around and everything because, you know, we've talked about this before. Uh, big, big ass knives like that. If you put that on your belt, which you can, that loop will do that, you know. Um, it gets in the way. Okay, it, it doesn't have as much uh, function as far as moving back and forth. So the dangler's right there. You can loop that up over your belt, under your belt. You can take it off if you want. Just gives a lot more, a lot more um, versatility when you're trying to carry the damn thing. Now, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty happy about the way this came out. George, you know this is yours, buddy. So I know you've been impatiently waiting for, <laughs> for it, but it's done now. Oh boy. <laughs> now, as you can see. It's got a big honking bolster on it. Okay, that's that right, right there. And for the guard, you know, guard, bolster, a lot of people have different names for them. The thing with this one, of course, is it's made out of steel. Okay, which causes all kinds of just... <laughs> yeah. Now, typically you see um, uh, bolsters out of brass. You know, I've, I've made a lot of them out of steel. I've shown them before on there. But uh, the... Um, Brass bolsters are a completely different world apart when you're making and fitting it to a knife. Okay, you see how that's all fitted right on there? Brass, you cut the slot, or you would right here. Okay, cut the slot down on both sides. You make it a little bit narrower than the blade, and then you file it, file it to, uh, to shape to get it on the thing. You know, a little file, 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 and put it back on, test it, and everything like that. With a steel bolster, you make it a little bit bigger, okay? Because you could be filing for days practically to fit that on there. But then what I do is I heat this piece up. I take that whole piece right there and I heat it in the forge. All right, I get it up to temperature and then I fit it onto, not right here, not not close enough to the blade right here. See this, this is all tempered. The whole, well, the whole knife is tempered, but this, this is the cutting edge. So you got to keep, you don't want to blow the temper out of that by overheating it. You put a hot piece of steel right on that. That'll that'll work its way up, and it'll blow the temper, and it won't hold a hold an edge. So, I fit it on oh, over here somewhere, and I I pound it down on the anvil, okay, to fit it on there, and back and forth, back and forth, and then I pin it too. So you can't you can't really see them. There's two pins in there too, a steel steel pins. It's uh, it's never coming off. Hell, I don't think I can get it off without destroying everything anyway. But uh, it's it's a rugged thing, and I liked you know we we went down a little bit on that. I wanted to do a curve on it, and then of course the curve on here. It just that whole knife fits really good in the hand, and it's big enough to have a glove on too, so you can you know you're not cramping your hand like some of those other knives. Um, that Marine Raider Bowie that I made, um, the originals are known for being cramped in the hand. There. They, a, lot of, a lot of vets there would say that uh, that end piece right here would bunch up on their hand too tight. But anyway, I made it plenty big enough, but not too big, just just right. And of course, with the rugged, really rugged, these uh, loveless bolts, uh, three of them, and then the lanyard hole. So anyway, this of course that's made from um, a uh, a vintage, well vintage, it's old uh, horseshoe rasp. Okay, it's got a nice uh, long, long swedge, really, really thick. It's, it's a lot of <laughs> it's, it, uh, it can do some serious work or, you know, defensive, whatever, whatever you need it to do, that'll do it. So that's probably the biggest St. Lawrence one that I've made so far. Now, same, same style, but, you know, I haven't put a bolster like that on a St. Lawrence. So and I like the way that came out. That's, that's pretty nice. Anyway, glad you like it, George. That'll be, uh. That'll be coming to you here. Talk to you here in a day or two. Anyhow. All right, so we got that one. 
had to show that one. That was really cool. <laughs> Anyhow, now this one right here is my new cross draw sheath. Okay, I've, I've seen a lot of guys make these different different kinds, you know, kind of on an angle. My other one has a, it's on an angle too, but there's another piece that fits right onto it. I, it's around here somewhere. Anyway, I kind of like this. Now, you can fit the belt in, okay, going through the back, or you can fit it the other way too, and it'll it'll go across the front of this, okay, that um, fits, you know, behind your belt, so it, it's even more concealable. And it's got that nice angle where you can pull it right out. This is spoken for, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> anyway. Did I mention what time it was? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> okay. All right. Anyhow. Just in case you guys want to send me any of this stuff out there, Death Wish Coffee, the company, you know, I'm, I'm plugging you guys, you know, the, the, the company here, you know, you, you know, if you want to send me something, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, okay, back to the knife. So, that, uh, that little booger, nice, uh, low profile, thin, you know, everything's, uh, I reinforced. I like to put rivets at, uh, at the stress points, but also to keep from any kind of situation where... That blade might want to go a little too far. That that rivet will stop it. Okay, probably not going to happen, but you never know. Uh, neck knives are, are notorious for that. Um, neck knives are kind of eh, you know you're you're hanging a blade upside down on your on your neck, and if you fall, <laughs> you know. But anyway, that's uh, it's okay. You know, I've sold a lot of those too. Okay. All right, so this one, like I said, this one's spoken for. But I am going to be making more of these at some point. Not now, though. I am in full production mode with filling back orders for Hudson Bay's. Okay, everybody out there that's got a Hudson Bay. Yeah, yeah. Anybody that's waiting on a Hudson Bay for uh, newer orders, which, uh, you know, anyway, working on those the best I can, so we're, we're going to it here. Uh, okay, now <laughs> here comes something. All right. If I don't cut the hell out of myself showing everybody. <clears throat> Jeez, I'm cruel. <sighs> Look at that baby. And no, it's not a, a saw, sawtooth fish, you know, those big ones. This is, uh, this is a piece of a uh, band mill blade. Okay, out of the lumber mill that I used to go to in Bristol, Vermont, which is now unfortunately closed. After 70 something years, a lot of memories going there, decades going there. I still can't believe they closed, but I have a piece of their of their uh, band mill blade, which I'm going to make knives out of. Jim, I don't know if you're watching this. Thanks, buddy. Um, that you know, I'm not using the whole piece. I know you wanted some of it back, so I'm going to be bringing that back to you at the fair. Um, but I'm gonna. It's it's not very thick. Okay, it's it's. Um, it's less than an eighth of an inch thick. Um, not entirely certain what the uh, what the type of steel is, but obviously it's high high carbon. We'll I'll be testing that out. So uh, probably some type of a flexible knife, a knife that's meant to be flexible. Um, fillet knife, or small, smaller. Um, um, well, maybe not a burden trout, but something along those lines. Anyway, that's uh, watch for that coming up here at some point. We'll see how that goes. Now, speaking of the fair, um, geez, August 6th, yep, August 6th, 2024, not too long from now, <laughs> here we go, we're going to be there at the fair like we always are, I think this is like the 12th or 13th year now that I've, uh, I put on uh, the uh, blacksmithing demonstration there at the fair, and have a great time. It's 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 quite an effort to get everything up there. All my stuff is heavy, of course. You know, anvils and stuff. You know, it's all freaking heavy. So um, once we get there, it's it's just a nice time. I like all the people. Everybody has a great time, and I can't wait to get there. But we'll be up there for a week. And um, if anybody's in the area in Vermont here, please stop in and see us. Tell you know, introduce yourselves. It'll be uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Can't wait to do that. So. Uh, I think that's about it. I got, uh, like I said, I don't, 
don't have a lot of time to make any extra knives up right at the moment. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to get back orders done. You know, the, like I said, the fair is coming up, and I'd like to get as much done as I can before that. So, um, if there is anything uh, new, like this one right here, this one went up the other day, and I put that up. That I, I think that was like three minutes it was sold. Um, if I have time to make up extras while I'm doing the back orders, I will. George, I know you got a lot of stuff on order, so... And again, that one will be, we'll be talking about this one here. I'll talk to you in a couple of days. And, uh, and we'll be getting all the back orders done as best I can. We, I keep saying we, and it's just me. Yes. Yeah. God. Anyhow. Okay. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate all the, um, all the support here. Uh, getting real close again to that number like I've been, I've been talking about. I appreciate everybody, uh, liking and subscribing and, uh, and mentioning things, you know, questions and stuff. Really appreciate it. So, um, try to have another one or two videos before uh, fair time, and uh, we'll catch you then. Thanks again for watching.